Cleaning symbiosis is a mutually beneficial association between individuals of two species, where one the cleaner removes and eats parasites and other materials from the surface of the other the client. Cleaning symbiosis is well known among marine fish, where some small species of cleaner fish, notably wrasses but also species in other genera, are specialized to feed almost exclusively by cleaning larger fish and other marine animals. Other cleaning symbioses exist between birds and mammals, and in other groups. Cleaning behavior was first described by the Greek historian Herodotus in about 420 BC, though his example, birds serving crocodiles, appears to occur only rarely. The role of cleaning symbioses has been debated by biologists for over 30 years. Some believe that cleaning represents selfless cooperation, essentially pure mutualism, increasing the fitness of both individuals. Others such as Robert Trivers hold that it illustrates mutual selfishness, reciprocal altruism. Others again believe that cleaning behavior is simply one-sided exploitation, a form of parasitism. Cheating, where either a cleaner sometimes harms its client, or a predatory species mimics a cleaner, also occurs. Predatory cheating is analogous to Batesian mimicry, as where a harmless hoverfly mimics a stinging wasp, though with the tables turned. Some genuine cleaner fish, such as gobies and wrasse, have the same colors and patterns, in an example of convergent evolution. Mutual resemblance among cleaner fish is analogous to malarian mimicry, as where stinging bees and wasps mimic each other. History In his Histories, Book Two, the ancient Greek historian Herodotus wrote, As the crocodile lives chiefly in the river, it has the inside of its mouth constantly covered with leeches, hence it happens that, while all the other birds and beasts avoid it, with the trachillus it lives at peace, since it owes much to that bird, for the crocodile, when he leaves the water and comes out upon the land, is in the habit of lying with his mouth wide open, facing the western breeze, at such times the trachillus goes into his mouth and devours the leeches. This benefits the crocodile, who is pleased, and takes care not to hurt the trachillus. Herodotus thus claimed circa 440 BC that Nile crocodiles had what would now be called a cleaning symbiosis with the bird he called the trachillus, possibly a sandpiper, but while he was right about the existence of cleaning symbioses, there is little evidence for it in crocodiles. In 1906 Henry Sharon quoted John Mason Cook, son of travel agent Thomas Cook, as reporting from Egypt that he had seen some spur-winged plovers approach a crocodile, which opened its jaws for them. Mr. J. M. Cook, of the celebrated tourist agency, when in Egypt in 1876, watched one of these birds, and saw it deliberately go up to a crocodile, apparently asleep, which opened its jaws. The bird hopped in, and the crocodile closed its jaws, in what appeared to be a very short time, probably not more than a minute or two, the crocodile opened its jaws, and we saw the bird go down to the water's edge. There were several of these birds about, and Mr. Cook shot two of them, which Dr. Sclater identified as spur-winged plovers, so that the question as to what bird enters the mouth of the crocodile is now set at rest. McFarland and Reader, reviewing the evidence, found that extensive observations of Nile crocodiles in regular or occasional association with various species of potential cleaners e.g. plovers, sandpipers, water dicop have resulted in only a few reports of sandpipers removing leeches from the mouth and gular scoots and snapping at insects along the reptile's body. Topic. A disputed relationship Cleaning symbiosis is a relationship between a pair of animals of different species, involving the removal and subsequent ingestion of ectoparasites, diseased and injured tissue, and unwanted food items from the surface of the host organism the client by the cleaning organism the cleaner. Its status has been debated by biologists, with viewpoints ranging from pure mutualism through to a form of exploitative parasitism by the cleaner. Marine biologist Alexandra Grutter explains Cleaning associations involve cleaner organisms that remove ectoparasites and other material, such as mucus, scales, and skin, from the body surfaces of other apparently cooperating animals. 
The latter are often referred to as hosts, customers, or clients. Cleaning behavior is one of the most highly developed inter-specific communication systems known, with clients striking elaborate postures which have generally been assumed to make ectoparasites more accessible to cleaners. Topic. Selfless cooperation Grutter and her colleague Robert Poulin, reviewing over 30 years of debate by biologists on cleaning symbioses, argue that cleaning symbioses may not be mutualistic associations but rather one-sided exploitation. However, one must then ask why no counter-adaptation has evolved in clients to free them from this exploitation. If clients are the puppets of cleaners, then the fitness consequences of being exploited must be small. They quote as an example of an early position, C. Limbaugh writing in 1961, From the standpoint of the philosopher of biology, the extent of cleaning behavior in the ocean emphasizes the role of cooperation in nature as opposed to the tooth and claw struggle for existence. Topic. Mutual selfishness In 1971, mathematical biologist Robert Trivers wrote more carefully, "...cleaner organisms and their hosts meet the preconditions for the evolution of reciprocally altruistic behavior. The host's altruism is to be explained as benefiting him because of the advantage of being able quickly and repeatedly to return to the same cleaner." i.e. mutual selfishness. One-sided exploitation By 1987 G. S. Lossy wrote less optimistically, "...cleaners are nothing but very clever behavioral parasites that have taken advantage of the rewarding aspects of tactile stimulation, found in nearly all vertebrates." Poulin and Grutter remark that over the last few decades, the opinion of scientists regarding cleaning symbioses has changed, from selfless cooperation, to a mutually beneficial interaction, and finally to a one-sided exploitation. Biological <inaudible> <inaudible> range <inaudible> 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 Cleaning symbiosis is known from several groups of animals both in the sea and on land sea table. Cleaners include fish, shrimps and birds, clients include a much wider range of fish, marine reptiles including turtles and iguanas, octopus, whales, and terrestrial mammals. Cleaning symbioses with reptile clients include fish cleaning the teeth of American crocodiles Crocodilus acutus, geckos eating mosquitoes on Aldabra giant tortoises Geochelone gigantea and scarlet crabs Grapsis grapsis, and three species of Galapagos finches removing ticks from marine iguanas Amblyrhynchus cristatus. The best known cleaning symbioses are among marine fishes, where several species of small fish, notably of wrasse, are specialized in color, pattern and behavior as cleaners, providing a cleaning and ectoparasite removal service to larger, often predatory fish. Cleaner species, as shown in the table, vary widely in their degree of dependence on their clients. Some are essentially pure obligate symbionts like the cleaner ras, some are opportunistic or facultative symbionts, like the orange chromide or some cleaner shrimps, and some, like the oxpeckers, combine a little eating of parasites beneficial to client with taking of blood harmful to client, their favored food. Topic. Mimicry among cleaner fish Topic. Mutual mimicry among cleaner fish Many cleaner fish in different families, such as the Caribbean neon goby and the Indo-Pacific cleaner wrasse share the distinctive combination of a long narrow body, a longitudinal stripe, a blue color, and small size. Convergent signaling among cleaners, using size, stripes and color, should facilitate their recognition by fish clients. 
This is analogous to malarian mimicry where genuinely aposmatic species such as wasps mimic each other's warning colors. Topic: <laughs> Aggressive mimicry of cleaner fish by blennies. The saber-toothed blenny Aspidontis is a predatory blenny, an aggressive mimic which accurately resembles the blue streak cleaner wrasse, not only in color and pattern, but also in the ritualized dance the cleaner wrasse makes when potential client fish swim nearby. However, instead of providing the cleaning service that it signals, it bites off pieces of healthy skin, scales and mucus from the host and then swims rapidly away to safety. The effect of aggressive mimicry in a cleaning symbiosis is analogous to Batesian mimicry, where a harmless, edible mimetic species copies the warning signal of a noxious, aposmatic model species, thereby gaining protection from predators. As in Batesian mimicry, the rate of successful attacks on cleaning clients by the blue-striped fangblenny Plagiotremus rhinorhynchus, which like the saber-toothed blenny mimic the blue-streak cleaner wrasse Labroides demidiatus, is frequency-dependent, meaning that the mimicry is more effective when the cheating fangblenny is rare compared to the cleaner wrasse. The difference, however, is that the aggressive mimic is inserting itself into a cooperative relationship between cleaner and client, whereas Batesian mimics insert themselves into an antagonistic predator-prey interaction where the models are the unpalatable prey. Quote, the fangblenny has evolved an opioid-containing venom which dulls pain and lowers blood pressure, confusing the bitten host and giving the cheating mimic time to escape. <laughs> 